morning, and welcome to uh, Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. Apologies for yesterday's error. That episode was meant for 30-minute reviews, but when you are not paying attention, as was the case yesterday, you end up uploading to the wrong stream because it is a simple button press between you and fuck up a ring. And then you can't move it either. That's the annoying thing with Spreaker is that once you upload to the wrong stream, you kind of just got to live with your mistake. Um, you can't move it to a, uh, a new stream. Uh, it's just got to stay there. And you got to stare at your error. Once you get the notification that the episode is uploaded, and you're like, oh, fuck me. Um, so, it is there. I could theoretically pull the episode, uh, download the source audio, pull the episode, re-upload it correctly. However, it's not worth the effort uh, to do that. It did really not. What the fuck is with all this traffic? Um, so, yeah. Let's see. Where were we? She-Hulk, that's what we're here for today. Um, I forgot what we were going to talk about. Um, because it has been a... I, I, I slept like a fucking baby last night. And then I woke up and I was like, do I have to go to work? Is it worth... Well, I haven't set the Patreon yet. If I'm ever going to. I don't know if I'm going to or not. I feel like it's not a bad idea. Um, I think we should try and get more listeners for the base podcast before we're like, hey, people, give us money, um, to listen to bullshit, um, and it's called the content, it's a little podcast to do exclusively on Patreon, um, so, yeah, that's, you know, probably not gonna happen anytime soon, because it's so time consuming, I'm in the middle of, you know, on top of work, I've got, like, five projects that are currently in the hopper, um, just, we, we already started coming up with what we're going to do for, for next year's anniversary, I think we have a pretty good idea, and a smarter version of me last night would have started working on it, but I got engrossed in She-Hulk, and then fell asleep, um, so I was tired, I've been watching, uh, the Chiefs game, um, can we address that, like, I know this isn't a sports podcast, and I know people tend to turn off when we talk about sports, but this isn't really about sports, but it's about, like, you know, yeah, the Indians changed their name, and they got rid of Chief Wahoo as their, as their mascot, and then Insignia, that's good, and, and, the, and, you know, Washington changed their name, um, which was, uh, you know, also good and important for them to do, um, but, like, the Chiefs, you know, I think the Chiefs get away with it because their name is less overtly offensive, um, but, like, they're showing the beginning of the game, and that, that whole experience last night was just kind of surreal in a weird way, because, like, the amount of, like, alright, like, I get every one of these networks has an executive that that's in charge of them, and, you know, I can, like, I could name the guy who, like, if Bob Chapek showed up, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's Bob Chapek, um, I don't know who runs the, is it, is it one of the Murdochs who runs Fox, um, I, I couldn't tell you who runs CBS, I couldn't tell you who runs... Uh, NBC Peacock, um, but, uh, actually, I think that Zaslav would probably run CBS, that, no, CBS is Viacom, um, does Warner Brothers not have a basic cable network? No, they don't, alright, whatever, um, well, they had CW, but CW doesn't show football, um, I think CW was co-owned with, uh, Viacom, anyway, um, I'm probably wrong about that, but, you know, the amount of times they're like, and here's Jeff Bezos, the pioneer, they called him a pioneer at least twice, and I'm like, look, this is the first time that you have streamed a game exclusively, um, because up until now they've done streaming of games, but, like, it'll be like, uh, they, they streamed, uh, a game on CBS, a game that was airing on CBS would also be simulcast on, um, what's it called? would also be simulcast on, uh, uh, Paramount Plus, um, or 
something similar. Um, and it's like, all right, cool. That's you know, that's cool because always the video content comes out better when you when you stream it than when you watch it on, on terrestrial cable. I'm finding. So regardless, um, we're watching like you know Jeff Beal is like the pioneer, and it's like, a, and it's like at one point it's like him and Roger Goodell, who's the CEO of, or the the, the the president of the NFL. There's like a couple of pioneers here, and it's like, what the fuck did Jeff Bezos, um, like, pioneer? Unique ways to get food on and off the field? Like, what the fuck? Um, and it's like, all right, whatever. So all of that happens all throughout the game, and I'm looking at, and number one, that's one thing, and number two, like, why the fuck am I still watching ads? I'm paying $15 a month, I think. I don't even know how much it is for Amazon Prime, because I don't look at my my bill that gets billed me monthly, and it's like, whatever. Like, I'll, I'll look at my account, and it's like, however much money went out for Amazon, and Amazon has so many little subscription services that I'm like, all right, whatever. One of them one of them is IMDb Pro, one of them is uh, Amazon Music, one of them is Prime, and I'm not sure which is which. Oh, and, and Audible, too, but whatever. Um, Amazon gets so much of my money, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, but I'm looking at, like, um, the amount of commercials they show during this, and not even just, like, interstitials where it's, like, commercial about Amazon-related content, but it's, like, DraftKings just has commercials. There's commercials for, like, the things you would see on terrestrial, you know, television. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm paying for this. And it's like, look, I, I understand to an extent on, on NFL Network, because NFL Network is still a cable channel, um, and they still have to deal with advertisers, and it's just they're getting a comment from that. But this is totally different. This is your streaming, you are paying specifically for this streaming channel, and you're still watching commercials. That's fucked up. Um, but anyway, back to, like, the Chiefs. It's like, I, I, I've never, I, would, I never went to a Washington T game when they had their old you know, their old name, and I never really watched the pregame, but here they make a big show of showing the pregame, because it's a, you know, it's a big deal, that's the first time they're streaming, or whatever, and I'm, I'm watching this, and it's like, okay, so the game opens with a guy hitting a ceremonial drum in rhythm, so a bunch of people can do a tomahawk motion on the field, and woo, and I'm like, yeah, this feel, this is where we start to get to the point where it's like, this, this is now, feels like it's crossing the line. Um, it, it's just kind of strange. Um, I don't know, I, I I'm a, like, it, it feels like it's something that shouldn't be, but either way, not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about, at, at, at almost 10 minutes in, we're here to talk about She-Hulk, uh, attorney at law episode 5, which we are finally getting the first indication that Daredevil will be on the show, um, in this episode, um, and I like the introduction of the guy who designs superhero suits, that's a really cool idea, I like that, you know, that kind of thing, um, and it does feel like, um, the, the Defenders verse is not going to be canon, um, but it will be tangentially canon. Um, Jamila Jamil is great in the episode, um, playing an, an over-the-top annoying influencer. Um, and it is weird. Like, there is one thing about this show that I do find a little strange. It is this juxtaposition between She-Hulk and, and to an extent... I forgot her friend's name. I know Gonzaga plays her, but her her, her co-worker. Um, their professionalism, and then even um, Book. I, I don't remember her first name, but I know her last name is Book. Um, played by uh, Renee Goldsberry from, from Hamilton. Um, it, that juxtaposition between these professional characters, and then it's like... To an extent, I understand anyone going against her is going to be unprofessional because, to an extent, we are watching the show through the prism of of Jen Walters. Because I think that that's one thing that we need to address when we when we talk about breaking the fourth wall. What breaking the fourth wall is, and I think the show does it very well, is it's giving you a narrator who is narrating from within the show. Um, 
it is, it is someone who is, you know, privy to most of the information, if not all of the information from within the story, who is relaying it back to you. So when she sits there and, and turns to the camera and goes, now I know you, you're excited uh, and you want to see Wong, but this is going to be one of those cameo that we kind of shows. Um, or in the first episode, she's like, now I want, I, I know you, you know, I, I, we, we got to get through this because, you know, it's just a fun lawyer show, but, we, you know, we have to get through this part. So, uh, so I'll just tell you the origin. Um, like, that kind of thing um, serves to be like, this is her telling her story. Um, and unlike a lot of other, you know, shows like this, um, go ahead, get right up my ass, buddy. I will jam on my brakes and we will both sit here on the side of the road. Um, and it is, like, we are, the whole issue with this, you know, with that is that, where was I going with that? Breaking the fourth wall, I'm sorry, this person behind me is entirely up my ass, because I'm behind a, a, a truck, and the truck is going, um, you know, funnily enough, the speed limit on the highway, up now she's getting off the highway, I guess. Bye. Have fun. Um, hopefully that truck speeds up just enough to not let her back in. Because um, that's an exit lane, not a passing lane. So, whatever. Um, so, she uh, she's... She's telling, you know, she's telling us the story. Um, and... As a result, what we're getting at this point with this, you know, everything that's going on with the explanation of who, I forgot where the fuck I was going with that, I'm trying, if you hear me, if you ever hear me just saying shit that doesn't have any bearing on reality or makes no sense, what happened was I lost my train of thought and I think that if I talk enough, it will eventually come back to me, um, but I completely forgot where I was going with that because that, that asshole was tailgating me. Um, for doing the speed limit, no less. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want people to hear this and be like, oh, he's driving too slow because he's on the highway and he's doing the speed limit. I'll go fast on the highway, but I'm not gonna, you know, like, try to get over an exit and a half before I need to get off just to get around his truck. That's not, that's not how I roll. Anyway, um, so, we're looking at, you know, her breaking the, th the fourth wall, and her talking about Wong, and her talking, I can't believe how I was going with that, but, um, what ends up happening is, um, you know, the, the, the whole uh, Avengers thing was pretty fun, um, and I, I think that, you know, I hope this is, on one hand, I hope it's the end of the Titania story, and then we get into something else for the third, you know, for the for the last three episodes. I, I hope the Titania story is done. Um, I have a feeling it won't be, though. That's just a, a feeling that I have deep in my gut that's like, you know, she'll be back after this, because I think she's, she's only been in two episodes. Um, I don't think we need to go any further. But the thing is, it's like... How many times can she go up against Titania at this point, where it's like, she just keeps on routinely beating her? Like, she beat the fuck out of her the first time they meet in the first episode, and then here they beat her in court, so it's like, well, where do you go from here? Um, it's not really a fight or anything. Um, and then meeting the guy who makes the suits is pretty cool. Oh, that's what it was. I think it's, you know, um, I think we're looking at a reboot of Daredevil. Um... Because I don't see why he would need to go to Los Angeles to get a new suit. Um, I mean, I can understand the yellow being... Because, but I think a lot of this isn't going to be explicitly laid out for the viewer. Um, I don't think a lot of this is going to be like... Uh, like, it's not like we're going to sit here and be like... Okay, so what you're going to do is... Uh, all of this stuff happened, three seasons of which, and... The thing I always see people go back to is, like, the, uh, the beheading with the door, 
where it's like, oh yeah, and, and you know, She-Hulk is beholden to the show where the guy beheads someone with a car door. Um, I don't think we're going to get to that point. Um, where it's like explicitly canon to it. But it's like, look, I can understand why he would go with the yellow suit now after everything that happened with Bullseye pretending to be him in season three. Um, and, uh, and showing that yellow suit um, the, the helmet at the very end of the episode is a great tease. I think it's the biggest tease that they could have done. I just wish... I feel like that moment lands a ton better if um, we don't know Daredevil is coming. Like, if we don't know that Daredevil is going to be on the show, that moment where they show... Um, what's it called? Where they show his, uh, what the fuck? That, that moment where they show his, um, his helmet, um, in the, in the box, um, hits so much better because we know that, um, like, we know that Matt Murdock is back as, you know, in, in, in active in the world as an attorney, but that could be a great moment where it's like, Okay, here is exactly what we, you know, here here he is back as Daredevil, and it's like that. I think that moment would have lasted a lot, would have landed a lot better. Besides, just like holy shit, let's just get this going, which is where I kind of feel I am now with this nonsense, where it's like, you know, I I know, I know this is coming. Like I know we're gonna get Daredevil on this show because he was in the trailer. They said it multiple times and and all of that. Um, but if he wasn't in the trailer and they didn't show the clip and they didn't do this and they didn't do this and then it's like, we know he's in the show. They're not trying to hide it. But at the same time, something like this probably should have been hidden because it would land better for moments like this. Um, like for fuck's sake, they hid that Wong was in the show, but not Daredevil. Um, I don't know. And I do wonder if we're going to go back to to Abomination, or if it's just Abomination's out of jail, and that's, you know, that's all that is, is laying that groundwork, and I also wonder if we're going to get a, any indication about what the setup is with Hulk going to space, because um, not that I think we should do Planet Hulk again, because I've seen that movie, we, we've, we did that in Ragnarok, I don't think we need to do that a second time, um, I just think that I want to have something resembling like what's going on here um like that's what I want to see explained and I and and I'm not entirely sure the show is going to explain all of that but whatever if it does it does if it doesn't we'll just you know wait for the next entry where they'll probably explain something different there because I think what's the next one after this uh Black Panther and then I think we get Secret Invasion in very early 2023. I want to say it's like January 2023 we'll get a Secret Invasion. If not January, then like February. Actually, no, that may come later because I, I can see them putting that after Mandalorian so that way they're not competing with each other. That's also a possibility. But until that point, we don't know what's happening. Um, tonight I'm seeing The Woman King uh, and then I will also be seeing out of the one, um, see how they run tomorrow, I have a movie called with, uh, Saoirse Ronan, um, but until then, have a great rest of your week.